So in this video, I'll be showing you how to make rings just like these that have mountain ranges on them. And this is not just on top of the metal. It actually goes all the way through so you can see it on the inside. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need to do is figure out what ring size you're making. And I'm going to be making a size 8 for this. So I'm just going to take my mandrel and my calipers and measure that out. So it's about 18 millimeters. So the next thing you're going to need is your metals. And these are... So these are about 0.6 millimeters, depending on where you measure from. And I'm going to be using the same size for this ring. So you can use one of them in a size a little bit larger. So you can get effects like this where you have an actual little cliff in there and a layer. And you could switch this to either side depending on how you round your ring. So now we need to figure out how long we need our pieces of metal so we can make the proper size ring. So I'm going to take the 18 millimeters and then add the 0.6. And this will make the ring a little bit too small, but because we're going to be hammering it and these are thinner metals, it will stretch to the right size, or you can stretch it up to the right size at least. And then we're going to multiply this by 3.14. So this is how much we're going to need. So just take your calipers and set them to whatever that happens to come out to. And if you're a little over like this, it's totally fine. So now you need to mark your metal. I'm just gonna use my calipers to do that. Um, if you're using expensive calipers or using metals that are really hard, don't use your calipers to mark stuff, but these are very cheap calipers and I do this all the time and they've been fine so far. So now that we have that line, I'm gonna also mark it on this sheet. All right, so now that both of them are marked like that, I'm going to make the eight millimeter mark on them. And you do it basically the same exact way. All right, so now I'm gonna cut it out using a jeweler saw and I'm making sure to use one that is pretty much flush because I have a bunch of them that have anvils that stick up. If you're cutting bigger material like this, you really can't do it because it hits it. So if you do have one of those, I do suggest getting one that has a flat surface like this. But anyways, I'm gonna cut the small line first. And then I'll cut out the entire length. And if you don't cut this 100% perfect, it's totally fine. Just try to stay on the outside of it. Because if you make it all wavy on the outside, you can at least cut this down to be flat. If you get into here, then you have to cut into your material to flatten it out. So if you do mess up, mess up on this side. All right, so that is our silver one done. Now we need to do the same thing with our copper. All right, there we go. We have both of our pieces now. And if you don't want to work with silver for this, if it's, say, your first time doing this and you're worried about cutting straight lines and all that stuff, just use some copper and brass, just like the rings in the beginning. And then you can work with those. They're a lot cheaper if you make mistakes. And you can learn off of those a lot easier than going through and worrying about silver. Just so it takes a little bit of stress out of this, because I know cutting straight lines is a skill that you have to actually work on. But anyways, with that said, let's get to the next part. So once you cut these out, they're gonna have a little bit of a burr on where you cut them. I'm just gonna take my file and just go over to take it down. Nothing too crazy. You can even sand this real quick and it would take it all down. All right, so we have those both deburred and we can move on to our next step, which is a kind of weird one. We're gonna super glue these two together. So I'm going to use some medium super glue. Any um, thickness will work fine. Any color doesn't really matter because we're going to burn all this off. But I'm just going to put a couple of drops on here. Also, if you're looking for this type of glue for inlays or anything like that, or even this, you can get some 
from Starbond and use my code GOMIA Creations and you get 10% off. And I believe it's free shipping too. So just take this and put it over the top. And do not glue your fingers together. So once I have it overlaid like that, I'm going to take something heavy like another bench vise and put it on top of it just to make sure everything is flat and stuck together. And when doing this, be sure that they don't slide because even though it is super glue, when it's wet, it is actually slippery. So I'm just gonna spray an accelerator on this to make sure everything's hardened so I don't risk getting my fingers stuck. So here we are, both pieces are glued together. It looks like it slipped just a tiny bit on the edges. So you can see on both sides, it kind of moved, but I made these a little bit bigger than they needed to be when I cut them. So I can file that off and everything will still be fine. And because it's a thinner metal, it'll stretch to the right size anyways. To do that, I'm gonna be using a miter block. And what this does is it makes it really easy to make perfectly flat edges. All you do is you stick your metal inside of it and clamp it down with just a little bit of it exposed. And then tighten these up and you can take off little areas like that and make them completely flush. So I'm gonna do that on both sides. You can see how close that gets and I can't even feel it now. So I'm just gonna flip it over and do the other side and then we can move on to actually putting a pattern on this. All right, now that we have this and it's all cleaned up and technically it'd be ready to go, it needs a pattern on it. So there's a couple ways you can put patterns onto stuff. Um, how I like to do it is designing stuff like this. So I can just print it out and have it on a sticky label paper and just stick it onto my stuff. And I don't have to worry about having to draw something perfectly. And I can basically repeat doing these patterns over and over again if I needed to. You can also just scribe in and draw on here. You can use a pen, you can use a pencil, you can use a little sharp piece of metal to scratch it in place so it can't rub off. A bunch of different things. So I like to design a lot of my stuff on the computer and I know a lot of you don't know how to do this. Well this is the perfect time for this video sponsor. So this video is actually sponsored by Skillshare and I thought it'd be a fitting sponsor for this channel because you're looking to learn and Skillshare is an online community that allows you to learn at your own pace. And every class is working towards a goal to make real projects, not just fundamental learning. It's, we're going to be making something. That being said, I'm actually taking a class right now from Jordi Van Put on how to edit better using Adobe Premiere Pro, which is what I edit all my videos in and make them better for you guys. And for these patterns, I suggest Inkscape for Beginners by Gaia Banfort. This is a free program that you can download and design this kind of stuff. And you don't have to pay anything for the actual program. And you can make awesome patterns like I do. There's also a bunch of other classes on there, including jewelry making classes. And you might even find one from me on there. So Skillshare is giving the first 500 people that use the link in my description or in the pinned comment of this video, two free months of Skillshare Premium. It will give you access to their large catalog of all types of different classes. So you can check out everything that Skillshare has to offer. And then after your two months, Skillshare is as low as $10 a month with an annual subscription. So thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. So with all that being said, let's get back to these patterns. I'm going to be using this one right here that goes all the way across because I want a ring that has a connecting pattern that goes all the way around it. So to use these, I'm just gonna cut them out with some scissors. I'll also have these patterns in the description so you can download them for yourself. So when using the paper that I use, the label paper, make sure you cut and have a grip point for peeling like this. 
because if you just cut this off, it's really hard to actually get this to unpeel. So what I like to do is peel it off and then cut it afterwards. I've also already measured these to the right size for a size eight ring. So it doesn't really matter what side you put this on, but I do need to cut this a little bit closer on at least one of the edges. All right, so you just wanna line up the corners. This is gonna be very finicky on camera. There we go. For this top edge, instead of cutting it down, I'm just going to fold it over just to get it out of my way. So now we get to do the fun part and cutting all this out with a saw. So we're just gonna start with one side and start our line, which is probably gonna be the hardest part of this. Cause you also don't wanna pick up your pattern. And then you're just gonna wanna follow your line all the way. When doing this, you can't do any backups if you mess up, just go with the flow of everything and make it work. If it's a mountain thing like this, you can just add an extra bump. All right, here we go. It's all cut out. And as you can see right here, I didn't like that little spot that I designed. So I just cut through it and just kept the mountain how it is. So. Now we need to heat this up with a torch and burn everything off of it and burn the glue. And make sure you have a well ventilated area when burning this stuff off. Okay, so I have them both on the screen. I'm going to need some tweezers to make sure to grab them. So I'm just gonna use this torch for burning everything off. All right, that should be good enough. So I get to take these and throw them into some water and then pickle them. All right, so here they are all cleaned up and you'll notice, and you probably have already guessed this, they are mirror images now. And all you need to do is swap these two pieces and you have exactly what you need to make that ring. So, from one of these rings, you can make two. They'll just be opposite uh, colors. And all we need to do is solder these in place using some hard solder. So I like using a charcoal block like this because it's a large flat surface and it is really easy to solder on. So what I'm gonna do on this is put some flux on it and then put our hard solder over the gaps and heat it up. And if you wanna know what uh, flux or any of the tools I'm using really. I have links to everything in the description, a full list of everything I use if you want to use anything that I use. All right, so I'm just gonna do one of these on camera, but I'll get both of them done. All right, so it doesn't always fill in all the little gaps or it'll bend up a little bit, which is totally fine. So just get it as good as you can and then put it into your pickling solution, clean it off, and then resolder the points that you missed. So if you look right here, it's missing some here and here and here. So I just need to reflux this whole thing. I'll probably place a couple pieces more solder on here and then everything should just flow all together. All right, so now that these are all cleaned up and soldered, you can start folding them around your mandrel. And you can pick which side you want on the outside. As you can see, this is the side that I put all the solder on that I'm gonna have to take off. And this side is nice and clean. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend this to be the inside. So when it comes to bending it around the mandrel, we actually don't need the right size right now. So I'm gonna use this part because it's not graduated like this and it won't angle it weird. So just take your thumb, 
and put it here. It should be really soft from all the heating we did. So you'll end up with them in these U shapes. And then we need to fold them a little bit more without making any kinks in them. Because the kinks are really hard to get out once you get them. I'm using some pliers that have no teeth in them either so it doesn't mar up this and leave marks. And then I'm just going to push them by. And then snap it back like that. And push down. This becomes easier with practice. So this is basically how you want it. You want the joint to be completely flush. If it's not from when we already cleaned everything up, say if these little bits down here stick out a little bit, just open it up a bit and grind them down with a file. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit of flux on here, right on the solder joint. And then I'm gonna take a tiny piece of solder and put it down here and make sure my joint is directly on it. So there you go. If you have a solder joint that is completely sealed like that, your solder will actually flow up. All right, so here they are out of the pickling solution after being soldered, and they need to be formed into actually rings now. To do that, we're just gonna use a mandrel and put it on the mandrel. What I like to do is push down on it because it's a thinner metal. It'll bend for the most part, but we're going to actually have to hammer it using a um, rawhide mallet or a rubber mallet will work too. And then I'm gonna flip it over because this is tapered. It's going to have a weird taper on it if you don't do this. So I'm gonna do that to both of these really quick and then clean up their insides because they have a lot of solder left over on the insides and then form them to their final sizing. So to clean up the inside of this, you can use some uh, polishing wheels like these that are basically rubber grits or you can use some of the radio ones that I have that I've used a bunch of so they're a lot smaller than they should be and they'll fit inside the ring normally they're about this big when you first get them so used ones do come in handy after a while All right, so there we go. All the inside is cleaned up from the solder, so there's no weird um, bumps or anything in here. Still need to clean up the actual solder joint area, but we're gonna stretch this out first, and make it the right size. So we need it to be a size eight, and right now it is a seven and a half. So just gonna hammer it. All right, so we need to clean up the edges a little bit because they're not 100% perfect and they never are when you make rings like this. So we're gonna clean it up with some sandpaper. And this is some 120 grit sandpaper. And I'm going to add a little bit of water to it and then just kind of sand in a circle or figure eight and just kind of all over the place until everything is nice and smooth. All right, so there we go. The edges are all nice and cleaned up and even now. So we're just gonna clean up the outside of them because there is a little bit of extra solder bits and we want a smooth surface. I'm actually going to use some rougher bits on this so we'll leave some texture behind because it looks better, I think. So I'm just gonna use the same 60 grit rotary bits to clean off all the outside too. And then I'm just gonna work my way up through the different grits. So this is 120, and then it'd be 220, 400, 600, and 1,000. All right, so that's as good as I'm going to get it because I want it to have scratches and stuff to show more detail. You can fully polish this if you really wanted to. You can see the inside has a nice brush look to it. 
So to get the look I'm going for, I'm going to actually stain this black. And I'm going to be using black from Jack's Chemicals. And because I'm dealing with chemicals, I'm gonna put gloves on. I'm gonna use a paintbrush to do this, and I'm just gonna brush it on. See, it's slowly starting to darken up everything. You can also dip this in the solution too. So I'm just gonna let this sit like this for a little bit and let it darken up. All right, so here they both are now after being rinsed off. This one, I actually put the Jax Chemicals Ultra Black onto it and didn't let it stay on and dry all the way. So it's splotchy on purpose. And then this is the blackener for the copper, brass, and pewter. So it shouldn't affect your um, silver at all. So I'm just gonna dry all the water off of them. So then I'm gonna take a steel wire wheel and just go over it real quick. And I'm going to clean up the inside with these little um, scotch bright pads. And then for this one, I actually don't like how it looks now. So I'm just going to use this on the entire thing. So here we go. They're all done. And we have two technically matching rings that have opposite colors going on. And the pattern goes all the way through into the inside. And if you want more detail on your piece, use two different sizes of metal, like I did with these. It's the same exact process, besides you have a little bit more detail to it. And things tend to stick out a little bit more. And when you add your um, patina to it, it stays in all the cracks and makes everything a little bit more pronounced. But it's up to you on how you want to do them. Also over time, these will all darken up and start to patina naturally. So that's about it. If you found this video helpful, leave a like. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I try to get back to everyone. And if you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe to my channel. I try to get out videos every week. And if you want to help support my channel, I have a Patreon, and you can start supporting as low as a dollar. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.